Hello, my name is Yasuko Uchida and I am the director of the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. The Japan Foundation Los Angeles promotes international awareness and mutual understanding between Japan and the U.S. through a wide range of programs and grants supporting Japanese language education and arts and cultural exchange programs. In Physical 2021, we are delighted to inform you that we will focus our attention on introducing Japanese contemporary literature that attract worldwide attention these days. Today, we are very proud to present the literary event, a conversation with Eto Mori and Julie Liscott Haynes in collaboration with Counterpoint Press, a publisher of the English translation of Colorful, a best-selling classic in Japan written by an award-winning Japanese author, Eto Mori. The issues addressed in Colorful are the serious struggles of the 14 years old protagonist, Makoto Kobayashi, such as pressure to be successful, hopelessness for not being able to cope with his family and school life, which even makes him suicidal. However, Eto Mori depicted his suffering and growth, as well as his parents' awareness in a very humorous way that makes us not only sympathize with this coming-of-age tale, but also purely indulge in the pleasures of leading. I'm sure Colorful is for all ages, for all over the world, and today's thought-provoking session will compel you to read the book as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Yukiko Tominaga at Counterpoint Press. I am the editor of the English translation of Colorful by Eto Mori. I'd like to thank the Japan Foundation Los Angeles for hosting today's event. I am so delighted to introduce the author of Colorful, Eto Mori, the English translator of Colorful, Jocelyn Allen, and today's conversation facilitator, Julie Liscott Hames. In Colorful, when the dead soul receives a second chance to get back on the life cycle of rebirth, the angel sends him to a mission. The soul must return to the world and live as a 14 years old boy, Makoto Kobayashi, who has just committed suicide. Kirkus Levy wrote in quote, Etomori tackles a fraught topic with empathy, humor, and grace an uplifting tale about the kaleidoscopic nature of the human soul. This life-affirming novel has been a best-selling classic in Japan over 20 years. It won the Sankei Children's Publishing Culture Prize in 1999. It has been translated into seven different languages and adapted into an animation film and live-action movies. Etomori has been a leading author in Japan for over 30 years. She has won numerous major awards in Japan, including the Naoki Prize, one of Japan's most prestigious awards for popular fiction. She's joining us today from Tokyo, Japan. When Colorful was first published in Japan in 1998, Japan's suicide rate reached its peak. Mori realized the people who are suffering cannot push themselves to care about the difficult situation endured by some stranger in a book. What could a novel possibly do to help? She chose to write about a serious subject with a comical touch. According to the Center for Disease Control, the suicide rate among US, U.S. youth increased nearly 60% between 2007 and 2018, and the rate reached its highest in 2019. The last year, the COVID pandemic hit globally, 
making it even harder for everyone to stay connected. Colorful cannot be more relevant to introduce to the U.S. leaders now than ever. The facilitator, Julie Lithcott Hames, is the New York Times bestselling author of the Anti-Helicopter Parenting Manifesto, How to Raise an Adult, which gave rise to a TED Talk that has over 5 million views. Her second book is the critically acclaimed and award-winning prose poetry memoir, Real American, which illustrates her experience as a Black and biracial person in white spaces. Her most recent book, Your Turn, How to Be an Adult, which, which was published just three months ago, is an inspirational work aiming to help humans lead a more authentic adulthood. Julie is a former Stanford Dean who has helped a number of freshmen. The translator, Jocelyn Allen, has translated hundreds of short stories, novels, and manga, including the Eisner Award winning titles, Frankenstein by Junji Ito, and Onward Toward Our Noble Death by Shigeru Mizuki. She has also interpreted for many of Japan's leading authors, including Sayaka Murata and Mieko Kawakami. She will be joining the discussion as an interpreter today. Again, this is my pleasure to welcome Etomori, Jocelyn Allen, and Judy Liscott Haynes to celebrate the publication of the English translation of Colorful. Now I'd like to pass the event to Julie. Thank you and enjoy. Well, hi everyone. I'm delighted to have been invited to be a part of the launch of the amazing novel, Colorful, here in the United States. Tonight, I'm gonna to be in conversation with the author, Etomori, and we are delighted to be aided by an amazing translator, Jocelyn Allen, who's with us tonight and also is responsible for the English translation of this amazing novel. I'm going to begin by reading a bit of the afterword to Colorful. This is an afterword created for the purpose of introducing it to its American audience. This is a book that has been in publication for 20 years. It is an international bestseller. It has over 1 million copies sold and it is finally coming to America. And I want to give you a glimpse of what the author Etomori had in mind when she first put pen to paper to write this amazing novel. She writes, I want to write a novel that will allow young people who are tired of living to have a break from their own lives. This thought was the starting point for the whole endeavor. Teenagers in Japan have such difficult lives both now and 20 years ago, the time I first started thinking about this idea. They stumble in the race to get the right education. They're crushed by friendships based on classroom hierarchies. They suffer from the excessive meddling or outright neglect of their parents. The list of issues they face is endless. Bullying, dropping out, suicide. All these many painful challenges that accompany teen years brought up a question for me when I specialized in children's literature. What could a novel possibly do in the face of this grave reality? I could write the serious reality seriously. That's certainly one way. But these young people have their hands full already with their own problems and cannot push themselves to care about the difficult situation endured by some stranger in a book. Besides, for those who aren't in the habit of reading, just following the letters on the page is a struggle. I chose to write about a serious subject with a comical touch. I chose to depict it lightly. I wanted kids who liked reading and those who didn't have fun with it to start. I wanted them to laugh and roll their eyes at and relate to everything the characters did. I wanted them to enter the world of the book and be free of their everyday lives. And then when they closed the book at the end, 
I wanted the weight on their hearts to be just a little lighter. Eto, it is an honor to be in conversation with you as you launch this beautiful, poignant, important novel in the United States. Welcome. And I want to begin by asking, colorful is fiction based on a very real situation that young people in your country have encountered for many years now and young people here in America are struggling with too. Many young people in your country and in mine are struggling with depression, hopelessness, despair, and may even be feeling suicidal. What motivated you to write about this subject?やっぱり日本の中で子供の自殺とか子供の売春がとても大きな問題になっていてでそのことにうんなんか小説が何ができるかなっていうのはずっと考えていましたで先ほどその読んでいただいたみたいに子供のシリアスな問題をシリアスに
you you come ag up against these new things like your relationships with people or your relationships with your parents change you fall in love um, you have all these different kinds of of new problems um, but those are issues that adolescents around the world i think have in common so that's one thing um, I think that is universal about the book is everyone is, has faced those things or is facing those things. Well, let's dive in then to the story. As you've just said, the protagonist is a 14 year old, a 14 year old soul who has come to live in the body of 14 year old Makoto who recently attempted suicide. Why did you choose this particular character and storyline as the way to illustrate the complexities of adolescent or teenage life? えっと、ふっと生まれたというあの印象が強かったです。でもそのもちろんその背景には当時のあの社会背景自殺が多かったり、あの少女売春が問題になっていたりというのがあって、うちはそういう背景があった上でですけれども、一人自体あんまり自分の頭で
あのかなって考えてなるべく自分にとって面白いキャラクターを考えましたそしてあの自分にとって面白い名前もキャラクターの名前もまた自分にとって面白いものでやればいいなと思っていろいろこうプクプクとかいろいろ考えてプラプラにしたんですけれどもうん今回はだからあんまり仕事として気負って書いたというよりは自分をまずは自分で楽しみながら書いた小説でした。Um, so, to, to be perfectly honest, when I, when I started writing this, I was,、uh, a, a lot of my work, I was writing a lot more、um, serious things. It was for like, a publisher, it was for readers, and I was, I was always、um, considering that kind of thing. And, and I got to the point where I was just thinking about like, I wanted, what I wanted to write for myself and、uh, what I would write without really thinking about the readers or the publishers or, or you know, the budgets or, or any kind of thing like that. But just, I kind of had that. Idea and then the first sort of inklings of it came to me. And what would be fun to me? What would be interesting to me? And so there was, you know, the name Pura Pura O, this it was an interesting name to me. And I was thinking about things like that. What, like, a, scenes and characters and episodes that would be fun for me、um, that I wanted to write just for myself. And that's how Colorful came to be.、Mm -hmm. It's intriguing to hear you say this was fun for you, and I'm glad it was fun for you. And yet, the subject is so serious. Yes. And so, I'm wondering if there's also a place in you of deep empathy for young people, for all humans. There's a reason you've written this incredible novel about not just teenage angst, but serious struggles.、Um, Where does that come from in you as a, as a person, as an author? Why was that something that would be fun for you to write about and important for you to write about? I was in Oxford for two years and a half. I was in Oxford for two years and a half. I was in Oxford for two years and a half. I was in Oxford for two years and a half. 小説について自分はあの自分の自分にとって深刻な問題を抱えているだけで精一杯だからあの人が書いたあの深刻な小説なんて読みたくないって言ったことがあってあのそれを聞いた時にあのあ確かにその通りだなと思ったんですね。人はもう自分の深刻なことだけで精一杯で。うんわざわざ小説の世界に入って他人の厄介事を抱え込むような余裕がある人はそんなにいないとそれがなんか自分が深刻な問題をコミカルな楽しい方法で書きたいと思ったきっかけでもあるんですけれどもでも同時にその時あの小説を読んで人の深刻な問題に入り込むことで一瞬だけでも自分自身の問題を忘れていられるあの。本を読んでる間だけでも肩の荷が下りるっていう部分も小説にはあるのではないかと思って、うん、この2つをちょっと常にいつも考えています。Um, so, when, a long time ago,、um, in Oxford,、uh, when I was on a homestay, I met this、um, Girl, there, and we we're talking about novels. And, and she said, like, I, you know, I have so many problems of my own. I have so much, I'm carrying so much weight of my own. I, it's all I can do to hold that up. I can't, I can't handle the problems of, of someone else in a novel. I can't, I've got too much on my own plate. And, you know, there,、um, a lot of people, like, they just, that's where they are. They can't, they just don't have the extra energy or the extra mental space to go there. And so, if it was you know, a fun, kind of humorous sort of touch on the novel, that would be like an entry point and a, a way to kind of get in there. And also, I think with a novel, like if it can even for you know, a moment sort of get you out of your own problems and let you forget your own problems and, and put you into a new space, that's something that a novel can do. So,、um, I'm always thinking about those two things, you know?、Mm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
So um, I'd like to talk about the 14 year old at the heart of the story. And I think I may be pronouncing his name incorrectly. So I keep saying <laughs> Makoto. Is it Makoto? Yeah, sure. Makoto. Makoto. Is that right? Yeah. Let me hear you say it one more time. Makoto. Makoto. Okay. I want to try to get his name correct. <laughs> Makoto. Give us a sense of Makoto, his personality, his interests, his relationships, and his struggles. うん、<笑> あの、いろんなアングルからまた別の角度から世界を見つめ直すことができ、それまで見えなかった色が出て見えてきた。それがそのこのカラフルという小説の基本的なストーリーだと思います。So Makoto is a is a boy with problems. Um he has no friends. Uh, things aren't great with his parents. Um, he's sort of he's sort of backed against the wall. He's kind of at a dead end, and he only sees the world um, with this really negative light. Um, he's he's kind of pushed up against the wall in this way, and then this soul, this other person's soul, comes into his body and and, and does a homestay. Um, and now the world is seen the soul is seeing the world, um, Makoto's world, from all these new angles that Makoto wasn't able to see it from with, with new, fresh eyes. And that's the basic um, foundation of the story. It's a beautiful way in to understanding what Makoto's life was really like if only Makoto could have seen the fullness of it. So we have the soul seeing the more full nature of Makoto's life. Uh, it's just a beautiful way to expand our our understanding as readers of what the character is going through. And of course, the soul is experiencing it as well. Um, very often when teenagers are struggling, um, parents are a part of it. Parents are trying to help and may be helping, but may also be contributing to or exacerbating the challenges the teenager is experiencing. And I wonder if you can give us a sense of what you were trying to convey about the parents' role in the life of Makoto, what they were doing, what they maybe could have been doing differently, what they should have, um, what, what they might have done differently if only they had known how much he was struggling? あの、ま、ことの両親は、あの、それほどパーフェクトな両親ではありませんよね。あの、父親、父親で自分の会社の問題に没頭したり、母親、母親でいろんな長いことをして、うん、決してその子供だけを見つめて子供だけをケアして
それを受け入れる力を少年が手に入れたあのそういうストーリーだと思います。So, you know, I think Makoto's parents aren't、um, terrible or, or great or in any particular way. They're just, you know, the father, for a period of time, he had,、um, he was pretty much had his hands full with like a lot of problems at work.、Um, and then, you know, his mother, she's doing all these lessons and she's kind of running all around doing all of these things on her own. So she's not, neither of them are really only looking at their kids. and You know, they're not perfect. She's not a perfect woman. She, he's not a perfect man. And、um, for kids, you know, kids see their parents as just like parents and they don't really see them as a separate individual human beings.、Um, and then there, there comes a time, you know, when they do. And, and I think when the soul、um, comes into Makoto's body, he's able to see his father as, you know, a, a single man working at a company or see his mother as a, a single woman. He can, Start to accept them and learn that they are just people in that way. And that's the experience that、um, is gained through, through this aspect of the story. So he begins to see the parents as human beings who are flawed yeah. Yeah. and complex、mm -hmm. and doing their best, but maybe not always achieving that, but nevertheless trying.、Mm -hmm. He seems to also have that kind of. Um, epiphany around his friends, or if not friends, because Makoto didn't feel that he had friends,、um, he begins to see that the students who are in school with him are more complex and complicated than,、uh, than he had appreciated. Can you speak to,、um, to that aspect of the story?、Um, うん、誠は本当に友達がいない、まあ、いじめられていたような経験もあって友達との関係は恵まれていなかったんですけれどもでも実はあのそんな誠を気にしていた女の子もいたっていうのが後で気が付いたり早乙女君っていう一人の男の子が彼を、うん、友達になってくれたりで救われる。あの私がいつも思っているのはあの本当に一人でいいと思うんですよね。人にとっての友達って一人で十分なのではないかと。あの私もあのティーンエイジャーの時に、なんかいろんな心の問題を抱えていたり、あの世界との折り合いがうまくいかなかったりした時に、あの何人かの友達、本当に二三人なんですけれども、本当にあの。死にたくなったりしたらお互いにその前に連絡し合おうねって約束していた友達が常に23人いてで幸いにして私は誰からも連絡をされなかったし私も誰にも連絡をされなかったんですけどそういう友達がいるその,その存在があるってだけでもとても心の支えになっていましたなのでもちろん誠のような問題を抱えた子どもを大人たちはみんな心配するし何かしてあげたいと思うんですけれども多分彼らにとって本当に必要なのは、うん、1人でも2人でも友達なのではないかとそれでなので小説を書いていて早乙女くんっていうキャラクターが出てきた時に私自身も書いていて非常に救われた思いがしました。Um, right. so, Makoto, he has no、friends. Um, he was actually bullied for a while. So he, he wasn't blessed with、um, any friends around him. But even so, there was,、uh, you know, there was a girl who was curious about him, who was watching him, which he, he learns later.、Um, and then there's Sao, Sao Tome, who shows up and is, becomes his friend and, and ends up really like helping him out、yeah. and, and, and saving him in a real way.、Um, and I think, you know, like, personally, like, I think just one is good, just one friend is, is often enough. Like, When I was a teenager,、um, I also had you know, my own issues, and things, you know, there were times when things weren't just going well. And you know, it was just like having someone to reach out to and, and having someone to you know, turn to. It, it's just, it's, it ends up being a very powerful、um, support. Like, it, it keeps you from like, maybe going 
further down that path or, or further in a, in a different direction. And with, with kids like Makoto, with problems like Makoto's, you know, um, the, the adults around them are just worried and they're, they're kind of concerned and they're kind of butting in or they're trying to help but not really managing it very well. But really maybe like sometimes when you are a kid like that, maybe you just need a friend. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I was writing the novel and Saotomi showed up, you know, I was really happy too. Like I felt kind of relieved myself. There's that novelist saying that characters just showed up again. I love it. <laughs> um, you did just reveal a little bit of your own personal narrative. You said that you experienced some challenges in your youth and you discovered that sometimes just one friend yeah. is enough. And I'm delighted to know as a nonfiction writer that you, your own lived experience um, is a bit of the kernel for this book. And of course you experienced that. I did too. It's a universal truth that mm -hmm. just one friend can make all the difference. When one person sees you for you, accepts you as you are, it isn't about your achievements, it isn't about what you're studying. They just get you like Sao Tome got Makoto. It's a beautiful thing. There's a psychologist here in Los Angeles, a psychotherapist named Lori Gottlieb, who's written a best-selling nonfiction book about the importance of talking through your troubles in therapy. She wrote the book, Maybe You Should Talk to Someone. And she told me, that there's this concept of the delicious feeling of being known, I'm putting air quotes on it, the delicious feeling of being known. It's just when you're with someone as Sao Tome and Makoto were with each other and you just know each other and you accept each other. And in the face of life's challenges and struggles, that delicious feeling of being known by one person can be enough as you've so beautifully put it. I'll just pause there to make sure that Eto understands what I've just said. Yeah, I understand what you said. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, we've got an epidemic in your country and mine and many other countries of young people who are really being pushed to the brink when it comes yeah. to coping with the challenges in adolescence. There is something that's different about our current moment. That is, teenagers have been teenagers for a millennia. Um, adolescence has been a tough time of life, but there is something uniquely toxic about the pressure from home, the pressure at school, the pressure from society to achieve to a certain degree, the expectation of friends, the lack of support um, and literature can make all the difference. And I think it's clear that your beautiful book, Colorful, has made that difference in the lives of so many young readers, which is why I'm so delighted to be a part of its American launch. Without giving the plot away, without giving away what happens ultimately, um, tell us what are some of the lessons that you hope young readers in America now will learn from sitting with Makoto's story? うーん。そうですね。うーん。あの、人のなんか自分じゃない誰かになりきるっていうことってあの、まずは自分の問題から離れ離れられる。あの、多くのティーンエイジャーが悩んでいるその悩みを突き詰めると、やっぱり自分が自分であることだと思うんですよね。あの、自分が自分であることに多くの、うん、ティーンエイジャーが悩んでいて、あの、その誠が知った自分じゃない誰かになる体験っていうの
軽やかさなんだろうちょっと気が軽くなるとかあの私は自分の本にそんなに大きな力があると思ってないんですけれどもこの本を読むことでちょっと世界の見方が変わったりあのちょっと元気になったりあのその先ほどおっしゃっていたいろんなプレッシャーからあの少しでも解放されてくれたらあの嬉しいなと思います。Um, right.、Uh, well, I think people, so it would be just to be able to become someone completely, be, become completely someone that you're not, you know, someone else. And, and I think then you get away from your own problems and you can step away from all of that. You know, it, like as a teen, a lot of the things that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, are because you are yourself, you know, and you're. You are in, inside this body, inside this head, and you, you see things through those eyes. But if you could be someone else, if you could look at yourself through someone else's eyes, I think there's a, there's a beauty. There, it, I, I don't know.、Um, the world is, is a little lighter, maybe. And、mm. I, I hope that by reading this book, I hope that by reading Colorful, the world can you know, change just a little bit. or... Maybe you as a reader, you can just be a little happier, a little more, have a little more energy, and maybe just be a little freed of those pressures that you mentioned. Toward the end of the book, Makoto is advised or learns the benefit of、um, moving freely. You say, moving freely without trapping yourself in your own expectations and remembering the people who helped you up. And I think that combined with the notion of just one friend can make such a difference、um, becomes、uh, these real nuggets of advice that I imagine young people are grabbing onto when they read the book.、Um, in the United States, we talk a lot in, in communities of educators, among parents, among psychologists and psychiatrists. We talk about how important it is for our young people to know that struggling is okay, that to struggle is to be normal. We use the phrase normalize struggle in our efforts to help young people take some of the stress off of their bodies and off of their minds. We're trying to teach them it's okay to struggle. Everybody struggles. There's nothing wrong with you if you're struggling.、Um, I feel that your book. Is making that message as well. Am I right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Nayami o Kakaeru Kotoa, so no, oh, negative de Wanai. Nayami o Kakaeru Kotoa, um, Iko to Danai, um, so no, struggling, um, yeah, and Sugoko Sharko to Wakarimas, the Shmohonto Niso no, um, Jibun Dakega Nayander to Motari. その悩みを、うん、ネガティブに捉えることでますます落ち込んでしまうのではなくその特にその若い世代にとって日々がストラグリング繰り返したと思うのでそれをこう自分で認めてあげることができたらとってもそ,のそれだけでもあの若い人たちにとって楽な気持ちになれるのではないかと思います。Um, yeah. to have... Problems is, is not negative. It's to have struggles is not like a, a great thing either. You know, it's just struggling. Like, the I, I really I really understand what you're saying there.、Um, when it's only you facing these struggles, when it's only you struggling, you just get more and more depressed and, and bogged down by it.、Um, so, I think it's especially important for young people, what, like, they're, they're having these struggles and going through it, and they can just. Look at that and, and accept it, and accept that that's something that happens that people are just going through these struggles. And, and I think that makes it, the burden easier to carry. Absolutely. So, Makoto turns out to be an artist, a painter, and that's an important piece of the story. We have the impression that art is something he can do on the side. He's got his main pursuits, his academic subjects that everyone expects. He's got to take these exams. He's got to achieve at a certain level. 
And the art room is over here on the side. It's a place where he feels he can be himself. He can feel seen, as we like to say, supported in the, being the person that he is. He has an art teacher who seems to care about him. Friends show up there or fellow students that turn out to be important show up there. Um, you've called the book Colorful. The title of the book is Colorful. And so I'd really like to explore what you were doing in making art uh, Makoto an artist, a painter. Um, there's a painting underway that he's been working on sort of throughout this story. Why did you choose that Makoto would be an artist and what is intended by the title Colorful? まず、まことにあと美術を選ばせたのは、あの、多分自分自身の経験から来てるのかもしれないんですけれども、自分がここの頃に本当は最初美術の道に進みたかったっていうのがあるんですね。で、私はあの、競争がすごく苦手で、あ
there are a lot of color words and in the book. And so it's that process of like accepting all of these colors that you come to the title colorful. Accepting all of these colors is a way of accepting um, the many different aspects of the self. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, dark side and good side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He come to know people have many different faces and he accepts all of them. Hmm. And often we're told that truth when it comes to interacting with other people. We're told we need to accept that people are different from us. Yes. Everybody comes in their own shade or their own mm -hmm. way. Yeah. But in this novel, you're you have the protagonist accepting that he himself is made up of many different mm -hmm. colors. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting it, when I was reading it, I, as I learned that he was very serious about art mm -hmm. and that he had been put on the more academic path and that was the expectation. I thought the story was going to resolve the way your life did, which was that I thought Makoto was going to go to the art school mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and that was going to be how he felt better and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And that would have been too simple. Mm -hmm. That would have been the expected outcome. Pressure mm -hmm. to be more academic is an artist inside, mm -hmm. finally gives himself permission or fights with his family to go to art school and life is lived happily ever after. Mm -hmm. That's not what happens here. Mm -hmm. Tell us mm. why. Yeah, I actually I intended to let him go to art school at first, but I changed my mind um, because while writing, um, I felt uh, Makoto, yeah, Makoto just wanted to go to the same school with Saotome, his friend, so. いや。うん。はけねさ。やっぱりサウトメっていうあの友達が現れたことによってあの彼の心が変わってあの本当はあのアートスクールに行かせるつもりで帰ってたんですけれども、誠がそれを拒否してあの時々小説ではそういうことが
-hmm. It has over 1 million copies sold, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to turn this the right way, okay? Over 1 million <laughs> copies sold, <laughs> right? This book by Etomari, she just said, it wasn't hard to write. It just flowed out of me. Every writer listening is going, what are you talking about? This international bestseller was easy to write. That's wonderful. But why do you think it came with such ease out of you <laughs> when writing in general may take longer normally for you? Uh, totally, I have no idea. <laughs> but sometimes it, it happens, but not often. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the first time for me to write, to write like this. Um, never happened. Yeah, so... Um, so basically, I feel like this novel was a present from the god of novels. Yeah. Yeah, a present from the god of novels to you and a present from you to young people around the world. Do you know the work Catcher, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in your I, comments, you refer to the novel, yeah? I did refer to it. So for our listeners, our viewers, I got to read an early copy and write a little blurb about it to support the American version release. Yeah. And I likened the book to Catcher in the Rye because Makoto sounded to me like Holden Caulfield, who is the protagonist of Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> He's angsty. He's sarcastic. Mm -hmm. He's a rebel. Mm -hmm. uh, he's disaffected. Just whatever he's supposed to do is not where he wants to be. And um, I really think that that's what you've achieved. You have created this character that is um, is worthy of that comparison. If you know, and and I hope I didn't offend you by making that comparison. Um, but this is a voice, Holden Caulfield and Catcher in the Rye is a voice that American teenagers have read and read and read and read for decades. And now they've got Makoto and I'm happy for them um, because his journey is one that is, um, is a journey many young people can relate to. And um, in having written this, you make our young people feel less alone I know that you've heard from readers all over the world. You have legions of fans of this book. And I wonder, what is it that young people say to you when they come to a reading, when they're in an audience with you, when they write you, either on email or letters? What do, what do young people, what do young readers want you to know that this book has meant to them? ライムギバタケは日本でも本当に長いこと人気のあるあの若者のある種バイブルのような小説なので、それに例えていただいて大変光栄です。で、うんとカラフルを出してから本当にいろんな読者からいろんな声を聞いたんですけれども、なんか一
Um, I read after I read Colorful. Um, I didn't used to go to school. I used to just stay home all the time. And now I started going to school again. Uh, I've had a lot of um, people come to me with comments along those lines. And, you know, it's just I, I, I see how how so many kids are are having such a rough time. And the fact that I was able to help them even a little bit, um, you know, with with this book, it's really it makes me so glad that I was that I could write it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a book for young people, of course, young people who are experiencing the very things that Makoto is experiencing. But I think it's also a book that informs those of us who are older about what it is like to be a teenager today, whether in your country or mine or any other many other countries around the world. What do you think is um, if a parent was to come to you and say, I've got your book, I've been told I should read it because it might help me help my kid. Um, what do you think is the takeaway for parents if they are trying to use this book as a way to understand young people and be of use to the young people in their families? Um, what, what do you hope that parents might better understand about their teenagers and be more able to do by way of supporting their teenagers as a result of reading this beautiful book? あの、ティーンエイジャーが抱える問題、ティーンエイジャーの抱えてる痛みのようなものがこの本にはあるので、それを、うん、両親、親が理解するきっかけの一つになってくれたら、あの、嬉しいなっていうのもあります。あの、本って、あ
あのー、22年ぐらい前に、えっと、日本でこの本が発売された時に、うん、それまでにないような、あのー、反響があってあのこの本はほとんど私の人生を変えたぐらいのインパクトがあったんですけれどもやっぱりその、うん、ボーダーの壁が大きくってそのやっと。20年以上経ってこの小説が海を渡ったことにとてもあの喜んでいますそしてこの本を果たしてあのアメリカの,あの違うカルチャーの中で生きている皆さんがどう感じるのかなっていうのはあの期待もあったし不安もあったんですけれどもあのジュリーさんを含めてたくさんの,あのアメリカの作家の方たちがコメント寄せててくださってそ,のそれを読むほどにあ何かやっぱり文学っていうのは不衛生があって国境を越えて国籍を越えて、あのー、伝わるものがあるんだととても元気づけられましたなので、あのー、この本がアメリカの若い方たちそして大人の方たちにもうん楽しんで読んでいただけたら本当に嬉しいです。Um, so, 22 years ago, this book went on sale in Japan, and, and the reaction was, I guess, I mean, incredible. Like, this book, the impact this book had basically changed my life. And you know, the, the, the border, though, has been really, that wall at the border has been really tall. You know, like, it's been read for 22 years, and now it's finally、um, coming to life in, in the United States in this different culture. And I, I really am. I do wonder what people are going to think of it and, and, and how readers are going to react to it. I got so many、um, for, the, for the book cover and, and for publicity, we got so many comments from so many different、um, American authors. And it, it kind of shows that literature goes beyond those borders and, and lines and cultures. And that, you know, it really makes me happy. That gives me、um, a kind of hope in a way. So, I really do hope that、uh, American young people and their parents and, and adults in their lives can read and, and enjoy the book. That would be my, that would give me great joy. And I, I'd like to say my deepest thanks to Jocelyn and <laughs> the company, Counterpoint Press, and the, all the American authors who gave encouraging comments to Colorful. Yeah, and of course, Julie, thank you very much. And so I join you in thanking、uh, Jocelyn, who, who, without whom we could not have had this conversation,、yeah. without whom I could not have read this book. So,、yeah. Jocelyn, your work as a translator is extraordinary, and we're lucky to have you、um, available to be in this conversation with us.、Um, Eto, thank you for writing this book and yeah, thank you very much.、Uh, for letting me join you on your journey as you make、uh, your way into the United States as the author of this book, as the book makes its way. And I want to also thank the Japan Foundation for making this event happen,、mm-hmm. uh, for inviting me to be a part of it. I am deeply honored to be、mm-hmm. um, a part of the launch of this book. So thank you to everybody involved for letting me be a part of this. Thank you from me as well. <laughs> yeah, <thank> you. <laughs> yeah.